What's the best way you've gotten back at a dickhead boss coworker? I'll start. I worked as an installer in a remote office. I traveled a lot for work, often spending weekends on site. This was fine under my old boss, who gave me a lot of leeway by letting me work from home, gave me comp time etc. After 4 years, I got a new boss. Also, the company laid off everyone in my office, about 100 people. New boss insisted I come in anyway, 45 minutes drive, to sit in an empty office. But I still had to travel Sunday through Friday, with no overtime and no comp time. When I complained to HR, the HR manager told me that since I'm salaried, if they wanted me to work 80 hours a week, I would work 80 hours and I shouldn't expect any compensation. Everyone I talked to seemed to think this was true. Salaried equals equals get overtime. This didn't make sense to me. I called the local state debt of labor office, told them what I did. What I'd been told, they told me to get a lawyer and if they didn't rectify this, for every dollar they owed me, they would have to pay the state 50 cents in penalties, which is what I did. In a matter of 4 months, I settled out of court, got a new job, got a severance and made my boss do an exit interview where I told her if she'd been halfway considerate and legally complained, she wouldn't have to scramble to cover for the next 8 scheduled installs by flying people out from the east coast and paying them overtime. TL. DR I sued them for 5 years of overtime. Got 40 grand. Severance package. Letter of recommendation and told my boss off. I was a typesetter when it was still done on dedicated typesetting machines. Not desktop. This is pretty specialized work and demanded pretty good pay. I agreed to take one job at less than my usual hourly pay for 6 weeks while I learned their system. One I hadn't used before. Well, 6 weeks came and went, and I didn't see my promised raise. In the meantime, the horrible shrew of a past dupe artist went out sick and I was left doing both type and layout. A very important project came up, and there was only me to do it. Without me, they'd be totally and royally fricked. Even if they could find a typesetter who could do past dupe, there was just no time to run the ad. Hire and train one. I reminded the owner and manager of the raise I'd been promised when I was hired, and how long ago that was. Then I put all my personal desk choxies in a box, and told them they had until end of business to make a decision. I got my raise, retroactive to my hire date, by 5pm. Only kind of related, but had a verbally abusive boss who would make physically impossible demands and thought she was queen of the workplace, which she was cause her supervisors let her do whatever, even after I reported all this. So during one of her tantrums in which about 12 hours of work is being laid on me at 4pm that has to be done by tomorrow, I tell her, fine I quit, you can't quit, you have to give 2 weeks notice, what, no I don't. Goodbye and good luck with all that work that needs to be done before tomorrow. Very satisfying. Our company was giving us employees an appreciation lunch and had requested a small group of employees to plan and execute the event. On the day of the event upper management got a stick up their butts and decided that the planning committee was using up too much company time. They told us that any of us who worked the luncheon, serving and cleaning up, would have to do it on our lunch breaks or stay late to make up the time. We of course found this unacceptable. Prior to the luncheon we had a huge meeting where all the managers and bigwigs praised all the workers for a job well done etc and at the end asked if anyone had any questions or comments. I stood up and in a very friendly manner said that we needed managers to volunteer to serve the luncheon. All you heard were crickets for about 10 seconds and then a lot of whispering and scrambling as upper management made lower management raise their hands. It was so awesome to see them all using their lunch hour to serve us. I had the boss from heck back when I worked for a logistics company. We will call him David. This particular company did not hire directly for dock workers. You had to go through attempt to hire service, and logistics company had a 90 day window in which the dock super, in this case David, could call your temp agency and tell them your stint at logistics company is over. The temp would be called into the office where David would look at them and say with a large, crap eating grin, IT's just not working out. This prick would ridicule new temps about the way they dressed. Industrial temp workers usually are quite poor. Talked, mannerisms, you name it, in front of everyone at shift meetings. When a new batch of temps would start, 
He would pick an unlucky one out and ride him or her until they quit or made some minor mistake that he would chalk up to the temp agency as the reason this person is not working out. David was married to some big shot at a hospital in town. She was the breadwinner so he had to problems with keeping some low level super job. To top it all off David was also the only minority with a supervisory position so logistics company didn't want to fire him. EEOFTW. David was simply a shift super for the doc. Had no desires to be promoted because he had absolutely no responsibilities except to post a end of shift report, which he had one of the receivers do for him. That was my job. For two years I typed this butthole's nightly reports, knowing full well he never witnessed any of it going on. He just sat in his office eating or riding the dock on a golf cart looking for reasons to fire new people. Anyway, I hired in as a temp, kept my head down through David's horse shit and eventually got promoted to head of a different department away from him. Three years later logistics company decided that receiving David's department was lacking direction and decided to hire a department head for them. I got the job. I was now David's boss. He turned pale when it was announced the next day at work. I thought he was gonna die on the spot. He knew that for years I witnessed every bit of the terrible things he had said and done to the temps. I showed up nightly for 3 months on his shifts to monitor how David ran his shifts. Watching him make stupid mistakes one after another. Any one of these things I could have easily terminated him for. But held out and documented everything. When it finally came time, I called him into my office, armed with months years, really of crap to fire him for, but I simply looked at him and told him David, it's just not working out. Someone kept stealing my lunch at work, and me being the pacifist that I am decided to just mention it casually to my wife. I didn't think it was a big deal, but these were the sandwiches that she made for me every day. She decided to make a special sandwich for me which consisted of bread and toothpaste. I put it in the fridge and after lunch it was gone. I don't know if the sandwich was actually consumed, but I told HR about it and they thought it was so awesome. They gave me a $20 gift card to our back steakhouse. TLDR someone ate a toothpaste sandwich and I got 20 bucks. Company I worked at for many years fired me without warning. My boss was a freaking strange guy, and I had seen him fire other people without warning as well. He always offered to let people stay on for 60 days so they could find new work, but they would have to sign a document stating that they were voluntarily walking off the job and waiving all right to unemployment. When he fired me, he also gave me the option. I did not accept, as it seemed a lot better deal to have unemployment in case I could not find work inside of the 60 days. The company tried to appeal my unemployment, but after several years of loyal service the only black marks on my record were being less than 15 minutes late to work 3 times. I let the judge in the unemployment hearing know that they offered to keep me on if I had signed away my right to unemployment. She let me know that it was against the law to do so, and ruled in my favor. Every weekly unemployment deposit was like a tiny victory until I found a new job. This is not my story, but my father's. He was working hard in an early at computer company, back in the late 60s. This is back when IBM was still known as International Business Machines. He was the only one who knew how to support and manage some of the large microcomputers that some of the customers had. His boss was giving him crap over my father wanting personal leave. My mother was just about to give birth to her first child, my eldest brother. He didn't even want to allow my father to leave when my mother went into labor. My father lost his temper, told him to get fricked, how incompetent he was, how he was riding on other people's talent, quit right there and then and left for the hospital. I still remember my mother telling me that my father came in, congratulated her on the birth and told her he had just quit his job. She laughs about it now, but you can imagine how she felt. A day later, the owner of the company called my father and offered him his old boss's job. The kicker, the old boss now had to report to my dad. That's gotta hurt. I hope the old boss later went to him to ask if he could take some personal leave because his wife was giving birth, and your dad said, sure, because he is a better man than his old boss and he doesn't hold grudges. I used to have to report website usage, Roy and all sort of statistics for a bunch of different sites. I built a badass mother of a spreadsheet in which you only put a few numbers and it would calculate just about everything the company would need. It was a bit too complicated for my dickhead boss to understand, 
yet he would take it to clients and brag he made it, which pee me off. Then, after a while he realized that the spreadsheet was all he needed and could use my paycheck to buy a new house and laid me off. I told him he might need help with a spreadsheet but he said he was smart enough. Before I took off I changed a single formula in the spreadsheet and had a good laugh about the reports it spat out, which made no sense at all anymore. Worked at a company that did phone surveys. Probably 250 worked there at any given time. Prick boss pushed and then tripped me out a practical joke gone awry. I had worked there many years and ran system backups on the weekend. Nothing fancy. Just babysit the computers after typing in a few lines of Unix commands. Thanks in part to this, I had just enough access to the system to crash the entire dialing floor for 3 hours. 250 sitting dart doing nothing dart being paid on crunch day. Didn't get in trouble. Felt good, man. Nice, although I think you could have gotten his butt fired after that. This is a true story, I absolutely swear. It's also past any statue of limitations and probably before any real laws existed in any form so. Had a jerk wad that started at a failing.com with me. Within the first week he decided he wanted to fire me even though he had no idea what I did. ETC, ETC, etc. I was actually the only IT person at this point and was probably one of the more productive people in the entire building. He told me I had a week to turn things around of I was gone. First of all, there was no explanation as to what needed to be turned around or what in particular was wrong. My assumption is that he had his own guy he wanted to bring in, etc. I basically told him to shove it up his eye and if he didn't like it, I'd walk right there. He was a bit taken back by that and after another 9 months of being there, he was not quite a jerk, but still a jerk. Fast forward another 3 months and we decided we were going to fire him. The decision was based on information I had provided to them in regards to his lack of performance and wasting of company resources. Irony, right. The owners, against my recommendation, gave him advanced notice of their decision and let him stay for an entire day in his office without any supervision, etc. As I didn't trust him, I was monitoring his activity very closely. I discovered that he was copying a large amount of data from our servers and deleting it. Additionally, he was cleaning out his contacts and other client-related information, not personal. He was copying all of this to a USB drive. On the final day, the owners took him to lunch right before he was going to leave. I took the opportunity to return all of the data he took. I had backups which I was going to restore. However, I didn't want him to walk away with stuff that didn't belong to him. Finally, a couple very very incriminating emails accidentally got forwarded to his wife. He was cheating on her for months and was talking to this other chick about ditching her and screwing her out of HTE house and stuff and leave her with the kids. Not sure how that worked out, but hopefully for the better. Guy was a bit of a scumbag. In regards to the emails, no I was not snooping his private stuff. They were in his work account and when I was removing the items that he took, they were discovered. One had vacation pics of the happy cheating couple of as well. LOL. I work nights in a group home for mentally disabled people, and I couldn't stand one of my old co-workers. When I had to work with her, it felt like I was working with one of the residents. She was just straight up dumb. Every single thing she did, she did poorly. Cleaning, medical care, cooking, she burned jello, everything. I took to doing all of the direct care work with our residents because I didn't trust her to care for them safely. Anyway, she had a habit of sleeping on the job. A lot. Over the course of an 8 hour shift, she'd be asleep on the couch for 5 hours. At first I didn't even say anything because I was just glad that I didn't have to listen to her idiotic banter. But after a while I started mentioning it to other co-workers, and my manager. She got a warning for it, but that's it since it couldn't actually be proven. One night one of my residents got sick and had been taken to the hospital. She was released in the middle of the night, so my manager was bringing her back to the home at around 4 in the morning. He called the house to let us know that they were on their way, and somehow the phone ringing didn't wake up my dumb co-worker. I told him that she was sleeping, and he told me to let her sleep so he could catch her in the act, just for fun. And to make the point that she wasn't just resting her eyes, I balance a throw pillow on top of her head. He walks in and I take our resident to her room to put her in bed. As I walk back out into the living room, he's just staring at her, shaking his head. 
Finally he jumps up and stomps both feet on the floor as hard as he can and yells her name. She bolts awake and realizes the deep crap she's in. I totally lost it, and couldn't stop laughing. She was fired shortly thereafter, and a co-worker told me that she had been bitching and complaining, saying that she was going to sue the company for discrimination. Apparently she wasn't sleeping, she was having seizures. Seizures that happened on a nightly basis, lasted for 3-4 hours at a time, and that she didn't bother to mention to anyone. Yet, she tried to pull that crap on a company full of people that take care of folks with seizure disorders. What freaking idiot. Oh man. My dad did the ex lax thing once but not to his boss. He was a teenager working at a soda fountain and this older kid would come in every day for a shake and would just harass the crap out of my dad. Finally my dad got fed up and laced his shake with half a box of x lax He never saw the kid again. He's worried ever since that he killed him. This would have been in the 1940s. Tell him to relax. He'll never get caught now. Had a nice correspondence with Visa and Mastercard about the filing cabinet containing three ring binders full of names, credit card numbers, expiration dates and CV codes that they had written down instead of running securely online when the reservations are made. They had a manual CC machine in the office. It's still not okay to keep thousands of credit card numbers in a filing cabinet that all employees have access to. Very not okay. Letting them rely on me to fully run all aspects of our office facility except the machinery itself. No one else can or will do my job because it sucks so bad, but it's an absolute necessity for the place to operate, and I'm about to quit with no notice. <laughs> I would ask for a huge raise first if I were you. When I was 15 I worked at a cafe in Sydney. The place had poor business practices and was generally very dirty and poorly managed. I was being paid below minimum wage, but I only realized this after I quit, because they treated all the young employees like slaves. I sent an email to my old boss specifying a dollar amount that he owed me, to which he responded saying that he paid me correctly. Long story short I got the workplace ombudsman involved and not only did he have to pay me the money he owed me, along with the other employees and what they were owed. He had to sell the business because while the ombudsman was there he noticed the uncleanliness and sent in a health inspector. TL. DR. Made him sell his business. I quit a job in a place I liked and disgusted at new management. Dishonest. Judged people by brown nosing not competence etc. I resigned 7 days after my first child was born. That should show you how desperate I was. By total coincidence. My new employer was in the same building. One floor above. Within 4 years, a total of 8 people have moved from the old to the new company, basically bleeding them dry of talent. The butthole boss of the old place gets very nervous when he sees us talking to any of his remaining employees in the elevator. Best of all karma wise, I didn't do this on purpose out of spite, it just happened. 1. Worked same place as mother. She worked there for years. 2. Mother gets laid off out of the blue, no notice given told to pack her crap and get out of the building, no reason given other than restructure. 3. I am taken to be carefully screened by HR and the director, under the guise of we just wanted to make sure you heard it first before the talks started getting around the office. We're sending the email later, please don't tell anyone. 4. I play along as though I'm the same sort of corporate scum. Don't say a word until email is sent. The email states that the position my mother held was no longer required and thanked her for her years of service etc. Regrettable loss to the company yada yada. 5. Quietly pee off. But just do my job. Tell my direct boss I've got the shoots with the company for doing a low blow like that to my mother. As he had told me similar feelings prior about past decisions. 6. A week or so later another email is sent around detailing a new position which was created. New title. Same actual duties as my mother's old job. 7. Forwarded both emails. Copied one to the end of the other. And at the top. Wrote anyone else see a contradiction here. Emailed it to international CEO. Head of HR for the region. Both of whom were in other countries. 8. Receive very rapid and very concerned responses from both, as in minutes. 9. Regional HR organizes clandestine meeting out of work hours and a surprise visit and management audit which I am the only one privy to ahead of time. 10. Lots of shouting. Nobody clued into who stirred up the shitstorm. 11. 
Direct boss I had confided in puts in surprise resignation. Offered me better paying position with the competition quietly. 12. Give no notice and leave a massive job that the only other guy left in the department. Call him the retarded one. Has no idea how to start let alone deliver. They ended up paying an external contractor for a week's worth of on-site fuck up fixing. As well as reimbursing the customer for the service charges due to the fuck up. 13. A month or so later after all the auditing, the national GM was bumped back to head of sales. He was the one who made the decision to sack my mother. And apparently it was because he was using her as a fall guy for a very poor decision he had made extending a massive amount of credits to a customer who eventually went under. I think they didn't fire him because of his connections or some crap. I worked with a supreme douche for a few months in my early 20s. One of those guys that tells stories to try and impress other people but really just ends up making himself look like an butthole. Cheating on his GF. Beating people up for fun. Selling drugs. It was a boring mindless job so I took it all in stride. In one ear out the other. Until the night I see him selling pills right in the middle of the store. Amongst the 812 security cameras. I didn't pull any badass moves to get him busted. Just reported to the owner whose son is a sheriff with the state police, who watched the tapes and he was gone within hours. Felt okay. Once working as one of two laundry person in a hotel, the other laundry person had just quit, and I was training in a new guy, who was not capable of working the job, let alone holding an intelligent conversation. I just got another job offer, and asked for them to match the salary of the new job to keep me on. The manager not only refused my raise, but then asked me to work on my only day off so she wouldn't have to come in and train. I put in my two weeks notice and grudgingly told her I would work the extra shift. At this particular hotel, there was a guest who stayed there each month, and we called him the food man because he refused to use anything but the sheets and towels in the room to wipe the poo off his butt. So every night he stayed there, he covered two sheets, four towels and two four hand towels and washcloths in his fesses. I have no idea why the hotel management let him stay there but they were always the worst days of work. The day before the shift I had cover, the manager comes and tells me, prepare yourself for tomorrow, the food man is staying here tonight. Pretty much the last straw, I finished the day, and then just didn't set my alarm. The manager got called in and ended up working a nearly 11 hour shift with the most annoying trainee ever. I feel a bit bad for sticking it to the trainee, but there is always collateral damage. I worked at a lame office job for 4 plus years and my boss turned into a jackass. Had to deal with his b-wife and bratty butt kid, babysitting included. They are were rich. Decided to quit. Handed in a month notice to make it easy for him to find someone and so I could train them well. He spent an hour plus reaming me out about how terrible I was. I ran the office. Ran it. And he told me to pack up my desk and leave. By doing that, I was able to qualify for unemployment. For the past 3 years. And fulfill my acting career. The best part is. I'm in a commercial that plays during crappy bus TV. Which he and his awful family watched all the time. So him having to see my face regularly is the best revenge ever. Not a co-worker, but my freshman year of college, I had the biggest douchebag roommate ever. He was a whiny, lazy bee who wore my clothes, and stretched them out since I'm 6 feet 2 inches and he was 6 feet 7. Scratched my CDs, it was the 90s, lounged on my bed, used my computer, ate my food, etc. He decided he was dropping out after about a month so he didn't give a crap about anything or anyone. We had a suite, with no other suitomates so we had a bathroom and shower to ourselves. I knew my supplies of everything were dwindling faster than I could use them. Deodorant, printer ink, shampoo, etc. And I knew he was using my stuff instead of buying his own. So I discreetly purchased and hid a new supply of said toiletries and went to work on my own. With P. I P in his bottle of shampoo. And mine. Cause I knew he was using it. I popped the top off of my cologne and peed in it. He used old spice. So I peed in that too. I wiped my butt with my deodorant. And his. Then put the caps back on. Basically if I could pee in it or on it. I did. All the while, I had my own supply of everything hidden in my room or I'd shower at my girlfriend's place. 
I hated that dish so bad but by the end of it all, I took some solace in knowing that he'd been washing his hair with my pee for about the last 3 weeks of his time there. Mine's pretty minor compared to the others here but I'm still going to post it because it made me feel very good. I worked at an independently owned coffee shop wine bar. Most of the people working there were young women because my boss was a class A douche. Also, he was French who liked jealous them and periodically make them cry. Every few weeks, he would find some minor little detail that someone did or didn't do. Grinding flavored beans in the non-flavored grinder. For example, and literally yell at her, sometimes in front of customers, calling her stupid, empty-headed, etc. I witness these little tantrums happen a lot on my shifts and I'd always try to help console the poor girl. One night, I was working with a girl who had just gotten her crap torn apart by him the day prior and she was trying her absolute hardest not to frick anything up to the point where I was actually doing most of the work. It was an evening shift and we turn into a wine bar in the evenings so there's certain things we had to do to prepare for that. Heidi, my co-worker, had turned the lights down and we were busy doing other prep work when the phone rang. I answered and it was the boss saying that he was watching us over the cameras and that we needed to turn the lights down. I informed him that we'd already done that but I turned them down even more. I did and went on with my work. 45 minutes go by and he walks through the back door. He never showed up to the shop later than 2pm unless something was wrong. He says, who turned these lights down I told him that I did. He started lecturing, yes lecturing, me on how to turn the lights down, what the place needs to look like, etc. I just stood there and let him finish his rant and when he was done I said, I'm sorry that I didn't turn them down enough. Could we maybe put a line on the light switch so we know where they should be every night well that started another rant. This went on for a good 20 minutes. Customers started watching. Heidi did her best to stay behind him so not to somehow evoke his wrath upon her. And I just stood there letting him yell at me. Each time he would finish one rant. I'd just say something like. Well, if I'm not doing it right every time then there should probably be some regulation. And it would start him up again. Yelling about how there shouldn't be any regulation because we should be smart enough to figure it out ourselves. Huh. Finally, I just walked away from him. This caused him to blow up and ask what I thought I was doing. Very calmly, I said, you've repeated yourself plenty of times. I know what I did wrong and I know how to fix it. I think you just want to yell at me in hopes that I'll cry so you can feel good about yourself. That's not going to happen so there's no point in me standing here taking this abuse when I could be getting work done. Surprisingly enough, he actually left the store and never bothered me about stupid stuff again. I worked at a crappy hostel for a verbally abusive, sometimes physically, alcoholic boss in a place infested with bed bugs. He asked me to do an overnight on Christmas Eve, where I would be the only one working, the day before, so I agree and never showed up to work again. He left me like 50 angry voicemails telling me how badly I screwed him over and he had to do it himself and miss Christmas. It was funny. Oh boo hoo he miss Christmas, when you were supposed to miss Christmas. It's not fair. Frick that Alkia swipe. I had a manager at a clothing store who just went on a power trip anytime the boss was around. Tell them how much she was selling and that the store basically ran only because of her. She would use her ad card to ring up our sales. Anyway, Valentine Day came around and I bought one of those huge box of chocolate shaped like a heart and put it in the back room with a note from the boss, whom was married, telling her how much he cared for her and that he wishes they could spend more time together and to call him if she felt the same. She did. Turns out they had an affair. The wife found out and left the boss who in turn fired the manager. I only heard of the turnabout later, because I quit shortly after V-Day. It still made my day. I'm a little late to this thread, but here's my story. I worked at a Chick-fil-A in Georgia from the time I was 15 until I was 17. I got a better job at 17 and turned in my two week notice. However, with one week left to go, the AC went out in the kitchen. I don't know if you've worked in a kitchen in Georgia in August. But it's ridiculously hot. I asked the owner when he would get it fixed and he told me that he wouldn't get it fixed for another month. So I quit. When I got my paycheck, I found that my pay rate had suddenly gone down to minimum wage for quitting before the two weeks was up. So I went down to an Asian butcher and bought a cow head. It was skinned but still had its eyeballs. 
It was really, really gross. Since my parents were out of town, I left it on my back porch for a couple of days to get a good coat of maggots and insects. Then, one Saturday, I snuck into the restaurant and put it on a toilet in the men's room. The toilet's pipes looked something like a cross, so I lit a couple of candles around the toilet and put up a sign that said E.E.T. more chicken. Or you know, you could've just called the labor board on them. Or the boss's boss. I spent a ton of my boss money, rang up his credit cards, drank his beer, ate his food, and even slept with his wife. He knows about all of it, and isn't even P. Full disclosure, I'm self-employed. In fact, he gave me a raise, employee of the year, full ownership of the company. 1. Put a honk if you support gay rights bumper sticker on an intolerant bigot boss's car. Stayed there 3 weeks. 2. PRNTSCRN the boss's desktop, changed his wallpaper, and hid his desktop icons. Tried to fix himself for 3 plus HRS, called IT, fixed in 15 minutes. 3. Very carefully started a rumor with other co-workers that the boss had died when he no call no showed one day. 4. Very carefully started a rumor with other co-workers that the boss was in jail when he no call no showed one day. 5. Photoshop numerous pictures of him and hung them in the break room. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.